fantastic. Now we've got uh, two of our speakers for opening up, and we're going to go to the third now, Andres Ramirez. We introduced him before, but I'll just say it again. He's the new head of uh, NDN's Hispanic Strategy Center. He is an expert in uh, Hispanic turnout, Hispanic politics, all the different uh, sides of that, as well as policy and immigration and others. Um, and he's going to be talking about the impact of this new and growing constituency on uh, the election so far. Go ahead. Thank you, Peter. Um, well, thanks for introducing me, but making me follow Amy is probably not the best thing. <laughs> I don't know how anyone can follow her expertise, but um, I'm going to do my best. Um, as Peter had mentioned earlier, uh, what we want to do today is not only take a look at the day-to-day -day of what's going on now, but take a historical look of what's happened with Hispanic voters um, in, in the election process and take a glimpse of what's happened so far through the 2008 primaries and hopefully take any any glimpses as we can into what, what, what that will translate to into the general election for 08. Um, so what I'm going to do is I actually have a slide presentation that I'm going to go through, um, and one of our staff is going to help us go through this. So we're going to start just with a brief history of the Hispanic population. Uh, one of the major issues that we feel at NDN has been impacting and motivating Hispanics to vote, which is immigration, um, and move through there towards the electoral participation. So if we go to the first slide going on, um, we see here that U.S. Hispanic population, um, and, and I should just, before I move on, uh, we have most of this information available on our website at NDN.com under the Hispanic Risings Report uh, that you can download anytime. And we also have a separate study that we just released last week, um, which is also available for you to download. So almost all of these slides will be available there, but if you guys need any more information, just touch base with me after, after the event today, and I'll make sure that I get you my card so we can get it to you. So I'm not going to read everything word for word because we all know how to read here. Um, and I only have 10 minutes. <laughs> so um, obviously, first point, there's been historic waves of immigration in the United States. Hispanics now are the largest minority in the country. Um, the census reports that now Hispanics among adults, that um, a majority of Hispanic adults now speak Spanish uh, or grew up speaking Spanish as opposed to grew up with, English, uh, with an English-speaking um, background. A uh, majority of Hispanics in the United States are of Mexican descent followed by Puerto Ricans and Cubans, um, and then you have a remainder from throughout the U United States. Um, and then also just one of the key differences that we'll talk about is uh, the Hispanic vote, outside of just differing between your nationality, um, also differs between the states and regions you live in. Um, there's a very clear difference between Mexicans who may live in Georgia or in the East Coast versus Mexicans who live in East LA, and even Mexicans who live in East LA versus Mexicans who live up in Northern California. Uh, I mean, there's just a very clear differences between regional um, Hispanic, so just keep that in the context of what we're talking about as well. Um, so uh, you know, the last point focuses on as well that, you know, of the 13 million registered uh, to vote, that several of them are foreign born, and that, that's a separate dynamic that a lot of people don't take into account versus the Hispanics that are born in the U.S. and their particular interest versus Hispanics that are foreign born and the interest that they may take into place. But one of the things that we've seen if you go on the next slide, is that the Hispanic population, and these were, you know, latest estimates that we have. There's some variations of some reports. You know, the Pew report released last week that they estimate Hispanics to be at 29%. Um, the reports we have from the census still have it at 24. Um, and so we'll be updating those as we feel we're comfortable with accepting the new figures. Um, but right now, Hispanics at the year 2050 are expected to reach 24% of the American population. So somewhere between 24 to 30% is where they'll be. Um, so a significant shift in terms of their share, whereas right now they're at 15. If we go to the next slide as well, we'll see that broken up throughout the country, Hispanics make up a, um, a very core demographic within the Southwest. Um, so if, we, if you hit the next button, you'll see here in the key states of California, Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas, you know, th there is well over 30% of the population is Hispanic, and that will directly translate into um, the amount of registered voters in each state and how much they can impact the election. Um, Nevada and some of the other states, Colorado, Florida, obviously New York are emerging also as, as uh, fast-growing states. Uh, Nevada, I think, will, will break 25% of the total Hispanic population um, at the end of this year. Um, and so they'll join a much darker blue state. But, so that's generally just an overview of where the population is. If we move over to the next, site, next slide, this is just a quick percentage of... Uh, what the percentage of, of those who voted in, in 2004 and 2006 exit polling. 
So we, we see that Hispanics make up a significant percentage of the vote, predominantly in New Mexico. They're, they're the largest percentage of population is in New Mexico, so that would make a natural, um, a natural percentage. One of the things I want you to look at is you look at California and where they are um, in 04 at 19 percent, and what you will see at where they are in 08 when we pull up those numbers. Um, but you'll see that there was uh, increases in just about every single state in terms of participation between 04 uh, to 08. So um, our estimates at this point are that Hispanics will be about 14 million registered voters in 2008, um, which is a pretty phenomenal increase within you know four years from where we were at last. Um, yeah, we're talking several million voters who can impact several states and several elections. Um, the next slide will also show you that increasingly, which is, you know, we talk about transformative changes as Peter talked about, you know, the Hispanic population in 2004 was almost split between foreign born and native born. And I'm pretty sure those numbers are even closer now for the 08 election. So just the demographic within the Hispanic community as well is dramatically different than it was, you know, uh, in 96. Um, and so forth. So we've seen dramatic transformations within the Hispanic population. So what does all this mean? Oh, did we skip one? Can you go back a slide? Well, great, it's not there. Um, <laughs> it's in my handout, though. Um, so what we're going to look at, if you want to go ahead and just move to the next map, is we're going to see uh, the role that Hispanics will play in tipping the Electoral College. Um, you will see here that over the past four cycles, what this chart will ind indicate to you is where the Democratic Party and the Republican Party stand in terms of base electoral votes they get in each campaign. So over the past four um, cycles, Democrats have consistently won these dark blue states that gives them 240 electoral votes. The Republicans have consistently won those 135 electoral votes with 155 being competitive. Um, and you see there's, there's a very huge gray area there in the Southwest. So as you move over to the next slide, um, you see with the core Democratic states, if the Democrats were to begin to focus on the Southwest, on the four Southwestern states, that how, how that will impact the amount of electoral votes they'll get to get them the White House. If we move forward on that, it, just taking those four states instantly puts us at 277. Um, I'll give you an indication, and I know some of these people brings up a lot of bad memories, but in the 2000 election, had um, Al Gore won Nevada, even if he lost Florida, Al Gore would have been our president. Um, everybody focused so much attention on the state of Florida and trying to win that, and yet in the state of Nevada, he only lost by three points, um, and he invested very little resources in that. Um, that one state alone in 2000 could have shifted the entire history we've witnessed for the past seven years, um, which would have made it much better. I think you guys would agree uh, for everybody. Um, but just to kind of give you an indication of, of how impactful the southwestern states can play in changing, uh, in changing the map. So um, let me move on to the next state. You'll see that if you add Florida to it, so those same core states that the Democrats always win, you add those four southwestern states plus Florida, that now puts us at 304 electoral votes. That is a very healthy, comfortable margin that the Democratic Party wouldn't have to really focus on any of the other Midwest or southern states um, and not even really have to compete in Texas, which I think, you know, it is not necessary for us to ignore, but even without us focusing on Texas, these, these five states alone put, put us at 304 electoral votes, which, you know, it's, it is an absolutely comfortable victory for anybody leading to the White House. We move on to the next slide. All right, so, in 2000, um, our compadre, President Bush, coming from the state of Texas, coming from a border state, having relatives uh, that are Hispanic, he understood there was a different dynamic. Um, he understood running for governor in Texas and, and running in campaigns in Texas that there was a different dynamic occurring in our country and that in order for him to be successful and in order for Republicans to be successful, that he had to appeal and court Hispanic voters. This was a, a dramatic shift compared to other uh, presidential candidates who were largely ignoring the Hispanic vote. Um, you know, we saw that Matthew Dowd, his chief pollster, you know, in various quotes put on there that, you know, in order for Republicans to win the White House, they had to get anywhere between 38 to 40 percent of the Hispanic vote. Um, that, that's a very key number to remember um, because largely 
to this date, it's still true that they would need to get about 30, 38 to 40 percent of Hispanics in order to win the White House this general um, in 08. Um, and, um, and so Bush courted them significantly. Um, if you move over to the next slide, what you saw happen with Bush's strategy is that between 1996 to 2004, in two election cycles, Bush doubled the amount of Hispanics that supported the Republican nominee for president, um, which, which is a phenomenal shift. Um, simply by him putting such an aggressive effort out there, talking in Spanish, focusing on Spanish language TV, and reaching out to Hispanics, unlike any other uh, presidential candidate had done before. And then, if we move to the next slide, bam, 2006 came around. And the GOP, in their infinite wisdom, decided to adopt uh, a very radical anti-immigrant approach. Um, despite the entire agenda that Bush had pushed and Bush was favoring, um, you know, a pro-immigrant community, the GOP um, leaders and their absolute genius thinkers uh, decided to go a different direction. Um, we saw, as you guys know, I'm not going to spend too much time on this, there was dramatic marches that happened, um, you know, GOP advertised in several states, categorizing Mexican immigrants as terrorists, and it was just a very anti-immigrant bashing. Um, so what did this happen? As we move to the next stage, that it encouraged participation among Hispanics. Um, when we did a, when Indian did a poll uh, and asked Hispanics how they felt about the immigration and whether it encouraged them to vote, 54% of Hispanics said the immigration debate has, has encouraged them to participate more uh, because of the uh, anti-immigrant stances that were taking, taking part in this, in, this, uh, in this debate. And the next slide, also Hispanic turnout soared by 33% um, in, in, in a short four years. So from, from 02 to 06, they went from 6% to 8% of the total electorate. Um, it was a phenomenal increase, and you guys all live in D.C., you saw what happened. Um, Republicans lost badly. Um, if you go to the next slide, what happened also dramatically was all the gains that Bush had made were wiped out. So from doubling uh, from 21 to 40, uh, Democrats regained an advantage among Hispanics from 69 to 30 percent, which was a, a drastic change within their position of how they were heading. Go to the next slide, please. So the GOP's anti-immigrant strategy was a, was a dramatically political disaster. We saw this recently in the Washington Post where they ran their own editorial saying the nativism, uh, nativism was an editorial flop, that bashes of illegal immigration were failing at the polls, both in 06 and in 08. It was just uh, uh, a very dramatic uh, flaw with the Republican Party. We saw, that we saw states, if you move on, even Florida, that even in, even in Republican strongholds, you know, states like Florida um, and elsewhere that are typically considered safe states for Hispanics and Republicans, those demographics are also shifting uh, also, and the Democrats are competing, uh, if not splitting the vote among Hispanics in some of these states. You want to move forward? They're going to cut me off in about two minutes, so I'm going to hold on to the mic as long as I can. Um, despite all this failure, one of the things I want to focus on is that the anti-immigrant strategy is still prevailing within the GOP. Uh, McCain, um, if you want to move over to the next slide, one of the things I, I do want to focus on is that despite all this uh, anti-immigrant strategy, many key Republican strategists have encouraged the Republican Party to change their positions um, and to change strategy to no avail. They keep, uh, they keep pursuing this. Um, and what we are seeing is that in 2008, the GOP continues to lose Hispanics. The report we released uh, last week shows that of all the Hispanics who have voted so far in the primary contest, that if you want to, these are just raw number, if you move over to the next slide, 75% of them have picked a Democratic contest over a Republican. So we're already seeing a rise again as well from where we were 69% in 2006, and so now that we're averaging about 75% of all Hispanics who are choosing to vote are choosing a Democratic contest. Um, and real quickly, if we want to keep moving. I just have about two more minutes. Okay. So um, as we see here, this is just a show that shows for all those states that we had talked about earlier, Hispanics continue to increase their participation. Most notably was in California, where they um, almost doubled their participation. Uh, from the 04 primaries to 08, from being 16% of the vote to being 29% of the vote. But we are seeing increases overall. Uh, state, nationwide, if we look at all the states who have participated to provide data, um, Hispanics have increased by almost 50% versus their participation in 04, which is a huge increase. Um, what that means, if you move over to the next 
next slide, is that more than one million Latino voters have voted in 08 versus 04. I'll repeat that again. That's more than one million Latino voters who have voted in 08 versus 04, which is just a, a, significant, a significant number. And, um, and if you want to move over to the next slide, we can just skip that. We've already talked about them making gains. One of the things I do want to spend time on, because it was mentioned earlier, is um, this McCain factor. Um, a lot of people keep assuming that if McCain is the nominee, what that will mean for Democrats and the Hispanic vote. Um, I'm not sold and I'm not convinced and I haven't seen any hard data that suggests to me, um, and as Amy's talking about, as we're looking at polls, as we're looking at research, that McCain has a stronghold among Hispanic voters and this is not just some perception that people are, are believing in there. Uh, what we saw, which was phenomenal to me, is of all the presidential candidates who are running this, I mean, McCain garnered less than 50% in his own state of Arizona in the primary. I mean, when you look at what, how Obama did in his home state, how Mitt Romney did in Utah and Michigan, how Hillary did in New York, I mean, McCain, even among Republicans in his own state, wasn't able to get a majority of them to support him. And if you look at how Hispanics voted in Arizona in the primary, McCain garnered less than 22% of the Hispanic electorate. And on another subject, for all this talk that Obama has a Hispanic problem, Obama got more Hispanics to vote for him in the Arizona primary than John McCain did in John McCain's state. Um, so this, this, this speculation that whether Obama's a nominee or if McCain is a nominee, Democrats are going to have a problem courting the Latino vote or gaining the Latino vote from McCain, I, I, just, I just disagree with it. I just don't think that that's going to happen. Um, one of the things people are saying as well, although he's modified his immigration position slightly in the past years, he's had such a long history um, of supporting immigration that it's going to be hard to overturn that. Uh, anyone here who watched the 2004 presidential election saw that it didn't take too long for a small group who invested $100,000 in a Swiss boat veterans ad to derail the entire years of military service that John Kerry had put in. Um, I don't think it would take too long for any group to educate the Hispanic community that McCain has betrayed them and abandoned them at the time of their need when they needed him most on, Hispan on immigration reform. Um, and I, I, just, I just don't see any data that McCain is pulling strong support among Hispanics. Um, is it? You think? Yes. Is that done? Uh, just one more. Okay. Um, and what I do want to focus on in this last slide is this issue of immigration, because people keep talking about. While McCain and the Republicans keep moving to the right on immigration, um, it's, it's just inconsistent with what the GOP voters are focusing on. Illegal immigration. Um, and deporting immigrants is not a top priority to Republican primary voters. It's not their top issue. And a majority of Republican primary voters, we're talking about the most conservative of Republican voters who have voted in the Republican primaries, have preferred an option other than deportation. So even among the most conservative Republicans who are voting, they don't support a deportation uh, solution to this issue. So I think this avenue that McCain is doing to appease uh, the radical right in his party is going to drastically hurt him in the general election. And I'll finish it there. Okay. Thank you, Andres.